Welcome to Progressive Goshen. I'm your host, Katie Spore. For this month's episode of Progressive Goshen, we're focused on one particular day. November 19th was Red for Ed Action Day, a time for teachers, students, and other public education supporters to come together in an effort to challenge the legislators for teachers' low pay, being held accountable for student test scores, and having to complete 15 hours of workforce-related professional development before being able to renew their teaching license. A statewide event was held in Indianapolis where over 15,000 people attended, and there was a more localized rally here at our own Walker Park. At the local Red for Ed rally, I spoke to Vice President of the Elkhart School Board of Trustees, Kelly Mullins, about how they're supporting teachers. So you guys actually gave the day off for Elkhart Community Schools. So what was, like, when you were going about doing that, what were you thinking about when considering calling the school off for today? We were considering the value of what we needed to do on behalf of our teachers and all of our staff. It's very important that I represent not just our teachers, but all of our staff and what the needs were on behalf of taking care of the school and making sure that our parents were taken care of and covered. It was just very important that they had a voice. We have a very passionate group of parent or teachers, I'm sorry, that work side by side, very close together on what's right for the teachers in the state of Indiana. So the consideration was there. The administrators and the superintendent worked very closely with the teachers and the school to make sure that everything that was in place needed to be for this day to happen. So the superintendent and the administrators of Elkhart Community Schools made sure that when they were working side by side with their teachers, that they had everything in place for what was safe and right for our teachers and all of our students for this day to happen. This local event in Elkhart, there's a great turnout. How does that make you feel about the amazing. support? It is amazing. Not only is it a turnout of our administrators and our teachers, it's also a turnout of all of our students. It's incredible to see all of these kids on their day off standing out here, and they're excited and happy to be supporting their teachers. Something that we forget about is not just do they educate, but on a daily basis, both of you think about how important teachers were to you on the way they mentored you, and they guided you to become the young adults that you are. It's important to see our students out there realizing the value of not just what our teachers do on a day-to-day -day basis, but what they do for our students forever. That's something that we forget about. We talk about test scores and we talk about the need for education inside the classroom and there's a lot of people that are against the teachers and against this day. But when you really break it down and you think about the importance and the value of our teachers and all of our staff and what they do for our future, it makes it pretty simple that this day is amazing. November 19th is an amazing day for our teachers to stand out on behalf of what's right. Goshen's teachers, students, and other public education supporters were present not only at the local rally, but also the statewide event in Indianapolis. Fifth grade teacher from Prairie View Elementary, Amy Fisher, caught up with me after returning from the Indianapolis Red for Ed rally. So Amy, what caused you to attend the rally? I've just been noticing in the past few years that we've just had more and more unfilled positions in our schools. It's just harder and harder to find people who want to teach. And also it's harder and harder to secure a guest teacher for when we need to have professional development or, you know, when you're sick or whatever. Amy, you have children yourself, so has this also been happening in your child's classroom? In what way? My son Lincoln, who is now in eighth grade, when he enrolled as a sixth grader at middle school, he's experienced that revolving door teacher problem in all of his core subject areas. Like, for instance, in sixth grade it was German and it's been math and it's been science and now this year it's language arts. And so I'm, I'm kind of frustrated at myself because I didn't get involved earlier, but this, this event wasn't planned earlier. And so it was, and so I took the opportunity and I'm glad I did that. When you were thinking about going to this rally, what really made you want to go? I especially think about my colleagues who have only taught for 10 years or less. They come to school every day doing the same job as I do, putting in the same amount of time, but they take home at least a third, if not a half less of what I do because they are stuck at this rate of pay that will not increase. Whereas when I came into education, I signed a contract that gave me this ability to um, have my pay increased based on the number of years. Well, those step, that step system doesn't exist, and so these young teachers are kind of stuck. Amy, can you talk more about the effects of iLearn on teachers and students? Means What that means is that we wouldn't be um, in trouble for our test scores this year because of the test change. But even bigger for me, I wish that point would say, um, when will the test makers 
be held accountable for a test that has cost us millions of dollars, and that's being conservative, <laughs> and, and not hold the students and teachers accountable for the test that isn't effective, that wasn't created by us, but was created for us, and then we are held accountable for. This is Progressive Goshen on 91.1 The Globe. Right now, my guest is Amy Fisher. And Amy, can you tell me more about the professional growth points, also known as PGP requirements? At this point, if, if that isn't repealed, I would have to spend 15 of my 90 hours of recertification time focused on something completely other than the field of education, which I cannot understand how that would make me be a better teacher <laughs> if it doesn't have anything to do with teaching. So I'm hoping that somehow somebody can change that after hearing our pleas. So did the teachers in Indianapolis kind of feel the same way? Oh yeah, we were all there. It was, it was the most magical thing ever. I've never been around so many people who have actually understood where I'm coming from. And you know, we all felt very supportive for like one of the first times in a long time because we were all saying the same things. We were all feeling the same things. We were all having the same issues at our schools. Again, this is Progressive Goshen. I'm speaking to Amy Fisher, fifth grade teacher at Prairie View Elementary School. The things you mentioned, Amy, have been something that has affected Indiana teachers for a while. So what took so long for this action day to happen? Okay, I think teachers are generally optimists. And so I think we think good things will happen if we wait. And um, we have waited. I also think that as a teacher, our um, goodness is played on huge and so we're kind of told well we're just going to do this for the best of the students don't you want to do this for the best of the students let's do this for the best of the students and so that becomes part of who you are and you start thinking um, you have this little bit of guilt that you know anytime you're thinking that maybe what they're what you're being asked to do isn't okay then you automatically hear that little voice saying but it's is it for the you've got to do it because it's for the best of the students and we just keep taking on more and more and more and uh, I guess why now and not then I think we're also a little scared because it had been that you know we're pretty dispensable there are people waiting to take over there were people waiting to take over jobs who would come in at a much lower salary rate than some of us, the older ones. And so it is kind of a frightening thing and you do feel a little bit of an imbalance of power because you, you do need that job and you, you do want to, you wanted to do that job someday, you know, way back when I wanted, I chose this profession and then the profession changed on me and I am in the middle of figuring out, I think that's part of it. Like we were just all figuring out what does this mean for me? Can I get through this? Can I survive this? And will it get better on its own? all of that mixed up. Another fifth grade teacher at Prairie View, Kelsey Norris, was one of the co-workers that rallied in Indianapolis with Fisher. Kelsey, when you were rallying with your fellow teachers at Prairie View, what was the environment like in Indianapolis? We were one of the first 2,000 people there, so it just slowly grew. Um, when we were in the crowd, it, it didn't feel as big as it was. We actually left to go and get more coffee and when you could hear the people chanting together, it just sounded so much bigger when you were out of it than when you were standing in it. It was really cool. <laughs> and what caused you to participate in the Red for Ed rally, like you personally? Right, um, well, it was kind of a slow pickup. We started talking about it when we were at a um, professional development session, actually. And I kind of came to the conclusion that I couldn't complain about my current situation if I wasn't going to take the opportunity to use my voice. And so we gathered more people and just went down as a big group. So when Prairie View was given the day off of school, did that make you feel supported by your superiors? Yes, definitely. Because, um, yeah, leading up to it, we didn't have that support so much that we were actually told that they were not going to cancel. <laughs> um, our principal, however, said, you know, this is something that we need to make sure that if you do want to go, you're going to go. So she called an all staff meeting and figured out how we were going to cover classes and said, if there's anybody else that wants to go, don't be afraid that you're going to get in trouble because you're not. We'll figure it out. So it was kind of when we got the email saying that the district was closing, it was more of a sigh of relief because there was some guilt of, oh no, somebody's going to have to cover my class if there's not a guest teacher. 
and I don't want to do that to them, but it was, it was more of a relief, I guess, than anything else. You're tuned in to another episode of Progressive Goshen on 91.1 The Globe. I am your host, Katie Spore. Today, we're talking about Red for Ed Action Day. I'm here with fifth grade teacher Kelsey Norris at Prairie View Elementary School. Kelsey, you're a rather young teacher. Can you talk about how the way that teachers are paid affects you personally? I came into teaching at a time where my salary was frozen. So I've taught for six years, and of those six, four of them, I was still at um, beginning teacher pay. So that was hard, obviously, financially for me, and both my husband is also in the same situation that I'm in. So um, we both had that base salary for multiple years and not getting acknowledged for our experience that we've been pouring into the district. Um, yeah, that one was, that's a big one for us. So there's this externship that requires you to put in 15 outside of class hours in the workforce. How does that make you feel as an educator? <laughs> It kind of feels sometimes like uh, people who are not in education are trying to just make it more difficult than it already is at some t at times. Um, yeah, I can't think of another profession where they say, you're doing great at what you're doing, but we're going to have you do something completely unrelated. <laughs> so. American Federation of Teachers released some statistics showing that Indiana is 36 in the nation for pay. Well, and, yeah. and it's actually pretty misleading. Our average is high because we still have career teachers that are making twenty to thirty thousand dollars more because they were on a pay scale that grew every year. So it it's difficult, especially knowing that as those teachers retire, our average is actually gonna go down. <laughs> it doesn't make us feel very respected, I guess. Students as young as third grader Christina were rallying alongside parents and teachers, and for Christina, it was both. Her mother is kindergarten teacher at Prairie View, Aaron Bihamurio, and both attended the Indianapolis rally with Fisher and Norris. And Aaron, I want to ask you, what personally made you drive down to Indy and rally? So I was very excited to be there. Um, I feel like it's been years coming, and so it just was... It, it, it was so encouraging to see so many thousands of people on the same page about something and um, reading people's signs, um, I'm excited about, or not really excited about, excited about change relating to similar issues. Um, it was is particularly special to me because I, I had two of my three kids with me. So having Christina with me um, felt very important because I'm not only a teacher, I'm also a mom. And so these issues affect me and my students and also my own children. So Katrina, how are teachers important in your daily life? Well, they're important because I wouldn't like know anything if I didn't have a teacher. And they're important to me also because they're kind of like my family. Again, you're tuned into Progressive Goshen on 91.1 The Globe. I'm your host, Katie Spohr. Right now, I'm sitting with kindergarten teacher Prairie View, Erin Beham Mario, and her young daughter, a third grader named Katrina. Katrina, you're in third grade right now, so I want to ask you, as a student who has completed all this testing, how does that make you feel? I kind of feel nervous because there's like test after test after test, and I keep feeling like I'm pressured because I have to do all those tests and then I feel like I have to do everything right. So Erin, I want to turn the question to you now. How about you as a teacher to be going through the struggles of low pay, I learn test scores? There's, there's so many layers to that question. Um, for the most immediate, I guess I would say um, I'm very much mourning the state of kindergarten these days because there's so much research that backs up how what we all see in front of us with children. Children love to play, but children actually need to play, and they actually learn so much through play. And with the way things have changed with education, we spend so much time um, testing the kids. And so we don't get to spend a lot of time teaching, much less playing. So even beyond the standardized testing, just getting back to a more developmentally appropriate way of learning through play and guiding kids through play and um, thinking of how it's almost feels like malpractice, I would say. It's kind of sounds like an exaggeration, but to know what you know once you get educated and read the research um, about how young people learn, how young children learn, and then you're not 
really able to teach that way. It just, it's this terrible feeling inside to go to work every day and feeling like, do I do what I'm supposed to do or do I do what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> like, do I do what's right by the kids? Do I do what the legislators are telling me to do? Or do I find that middle ground? And where is that middle ground? And it's just such a complicated issue um, that didn't wouldn't have to be that complicated because, like I said, the research is out there that explains um, how kids learn best, best. And if the lawmakers would ask teachers for their input or ask researchers or both, we could solve these problems together much more easily. Um, I think every teacher will tell you that we didn't go into this profession expecting to make as much money as many other professions do. But the lack of respect for teaching as a profession, I mean, the income is just one of the, the ways that it's apparent. The um, I, I don't know if it's eight or ten years that it's been since we've had pay raises. And I just I can't imagine like. What, how would the legislators feel if their pay, pay didn't go up? You know, how can you, how could you even think that you're being respected when it doesn't even keep up with inflation or it only keeps up with, with inflation? Again, you're tuned into Progressive Goshen on 91.1 The Globe. I'm your host, Katie Spohr. Right now, I'm sitting with kindergarten teacher Prairie View, Erin Beham Murillo, and her young daughter, a third grader named Katrina. So, Katrina. When you hear about all the stuff that's been going on with teachers, even from your mom's perspective, what what are you thinking? Well, it makes me feel like that it's not really fair for the teachers because we're like learning and stuff, but then the teachers don't get paid as much as they should. And so it's kind of not fair for the teachers. So Erin, can you tell me a little bit more about this externship and what it means for teachers? Basically, teachers have to get about 60 hours of professional growth points um, to be able to renew their license. And um, when, when you're up for renewal, you add up all the different ways that you've um, documented your professional growth. And so what the legislators have decided is that 15 of those hours need to be spent outside of teaching so that we're in touch with other careers or what the workforce needs um, so that we can better educate our students. So as a kindergarten teacher, it's a little bit perplexing um, to me to think of, about how going out into the workforce is going to really um, impact, um, beneficially impact my day-to-day -day teaching in the kindergarten classroom. I kind of would like the legislators to come do an externship in my kindergarten classroom and um, have to plan and, and teach the way they're expecting me to teach five-year-olds. And that feels like that might be a little more educational. November 19th is Red for Ed Action Day. This year, over 15,000 people attended the statewide protest in Indianapolis and over 100 people in Elkhart. If you couldn't make it this year, mark your calendars for 2020. I'm your host, Katie Spore, and this has been another episode of Progressive Goshen on 91.1 The Globe.